Hello everyone, my name is Bernard Dalasvayama. I am a lapidary artist, Hopi, Pima Indian. <clears throat> my uh, designs are uh, created by going into my own culture and using my culture to interpret my designs. And that determines what colors that I use, what uh, designs are created, and then I use the stones as a way of creating the design, just like painting. Instead of, instead of uh, paint, I'm using stone. So when I'm finished, my uh, pieces reflect my culture, the Hopi culture, and Pima also. And how I start is I take these big chunks of wood, uh, chunks of stone, not wood, stone. And this is sujulite, comes from Africa. And they're all different uh, types of stones. In this one, I'll show you what it looks like. It's a uh, natural color, but when you dip it in water, this is what it looks like. It looks like it's polished. And this is what it looks like when it's finished and when I'm done with it. So if I were to cut this, it would be the color of uh, the natural color. And then when I polish it, it would come to this point. And these are other stones that I use, all various stones from all over the world. This is crystal face from Australia. This is the stone from um, the Middle East. It is uh, from the ocean. This is coral. Most people will never use anything like this. But I use it for the color and then the variety of stones coming together and then representing my, my designs. I go from the large pieces to slabbing them to chunky pieces like this and then finer pieces, cutting them down even more. And then when I'm getting ready to inlay, I'm getting down into the pieces themselves, the lapis here and a variety of stones. And then I put them in bags depending on what I'm doing. So I'll just uh, show you now what it looks like when I'm cutting a piece. Here's a piece of turquoise. And this is my saw blade here. And it's very quick. like butter. So then I make my shapes and then that determines what I'm going to do with it into the design. Once, once I've got them cut and I have my pieces all cut up like this, then the next step is to uh, get my grinders and my uh, polishers all set. So I'll take this off. This is my saw blade. Okay, what I did was I undid the saw blade. Now that's off. And I'll put on my wheels. And these are the finer wheels. But not the finest wheel, these are the midterm. The finer wheels are here. And the coarse wheels are over here, I'll be using that. And um, I'll put the cover back on so we don't all get wet. and I'll add some more water. So we'll have water to grind with. You don't want to grind right on the wheels without water because then you'll be breathing in the dust. Safety first. So once I have my piece, I'll use the lapis. First wheel I use is the far left. This is the highest, heaviest grinding wheel. And this is just for shaping. You can see the color bleed off already. It's, it's good for what the Egyptians use for their eyebrows, Eyelid, eyelids. And I just use it to shape. 
and sometimes you want to take out some discoloring of the stone you can just use this to grind it off so it's pretty quick and then the next wheel gives me a little bit of a smoother surface it just smooths it out These first two wheels are steel, steel wheels. This next wheel here is a rubber wheel embedded with diamonds. And the rest of them are the same, diamond embedded rubber wheels. So this is the, the one that's the coarsest in the diamond wheels. It'll give you a, a nice surface, take out all those imperfections that are maybe in the stone that you want to get rid of. It doesn't give it the ultimate shine, it just helps with the shaping and the, the wheel itself. And then you get to the next wheel over here, you do the same thing. All the way down to finer. By that time you get over here, you should have a good idea how the shape is going to be on your stone. Because you're not going to be taking away any more large amounts, you're just going to be polishing now. Work the edges. And uh, usually I have an idea of where I'm going to take the stone so I have the shape all ready to go into place. So the shape is, is coming along. And I go to the next one. And I usually tell people to move your stone back and forth so you don't ruin your diamond wheel. You. Uh, are using only one space, then you're gonna wear out that one spot. By now, all the hard, sh sharp edges should be gone, and you're just uh, going to the finer polish now. You're starting to polish your piece. So if you take a look at this now, that has a nice shape, has a nice polish, but it's not complete, it's not completely polished. So I'm gonna take this set of wheels off and put my high polished wheels on next. And I just pull these off, just twist it off. And put on the next set. I'm ready to go. Sometimes uh, after you get very accustomed to grinding and handling these little pieces, you can do this with one hand. And it's very easy to just take your hand like that the finger is wet, so it just stays on your finger. But you have to be careful because if it flies off, then you're polishing your finger. <laughs> so you can do a lot with it. Move it to the next stone. Sometimes when I do really tiny stones, it's all done with one finger. People wonder how I handle it or how I hold it. They think I have instruments. No, what I have is my finger. And that's it. They'll stay in place. You can feel the position and by pressure you can keep it in place. It's all by feeling.
I first started grinding, I grinded quite a few of my fingers and I had to move to the next one and I used this one for a while because these were healing and it took me a while but finally now I'm using uh, diamond wheels it's so much easier to keep them in place and just control it it's very easy so that's the finished piece right there And that's how I did that's how I did each one of these pieces right here. And they'll go into this bracelet. So if I were to put that in there, then I would have to adjust that with the angles, position, and go with the design of the piece. And the other thing that I do with these is not only do I design the culture and meaning of the cultural examples of things that I have in Hopi, each stone in Hopi represents one ear of dry corn. That's really the ancient style of jewelry that Hopi made. They put it in wood, inlaid the stones in little squares or rectangular shapes, and that represented, each stone represented one ear of dry corn in the storehouse, stacked in the storehouse. And what I did is I took that, that's where I got my idea. I took that idea of how we did our ancient jewelry and made it into this modern design that I created, interpreting my culture. And so everything that I do in my jewelry is an interpretation of my culture in one way or another. And the colors also are significant. And the stones are, minerals are, whatever I use, I try to use rare gems. and. Uh, collecting them from all over the world. That's the black that's black in there, the fossilized palm. Yeah, the, I, well I use it to represent the symbolism. I, I came up with that because a woman wears a black garment, the, we call it the manta, and then it's got a green-red line across the heart and along the border. So I put green-red, and we use that to represent life. And so I came up with that idea when I started making jewelry, is to put those colors together for it. And this is how, some of the pieces came out, and I use it in bracelets, buckles, and this one I'm wearing. See the land is the black, the metrilineal land, and then the sky is the spiritual sky above that. And there's a lot to the cultural information that's established those two bases, but uh, that's why I have that design like that. These four stones represent the four clan mothers that came together to form the tribe. So there's four of them. And then these little curls are the seeds they brought with them of the different four major corns we plant. The blue, red, white, and yellow. The blue represents the bear clan that came from the west. South, represented by the parrot clan that came from the south. And the east is a white corn. They came from the east and they represent the sun clan. And then the north is the badger clan. They brought the yellow corn. And that's my clan. I'm a badger clan. And each clan has a major role at how we uh, are uh, involved in the Hopi culture. And then there's sub-clans that follow them. So there's a lot of different clans that are involved in the culture and how we support the Hopi culture. And that's the meaning behind the colors and the design, four directions, this symbol is a cloud. Each stone again represents an ear of dry corn in the piece. And this is my own design and ideas and art that I came up with to represent my Hopi culture.